Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video I want to discuss something which is important and something which you should know especially all of you who are in, still in colleges and haven't figured out what you should do that is competitive programming versus software development software development could be web development data science anything you want and competitive programming well we will discuss what this is so i have divided this video into seven important sections which i would be answering which i think probably are the most common questions as well so i'm going to start off with these sections so the first section, the first part of this video would be setting up my context and setting the context of video. So about me, I have been a web developer for a very long time. I have worked with a lot of technologies in the web, including JavaScript, Node.js, PHP, MySQL, all sorts of databases as well. And I'm still do work. I have written a lot of code for CodeDAM, which you see right now including the videos which are delivered, the CDNs, the architecture, the hands-on practice which you do. I have worked with a lot of technologies in the web development side. I have used this knowledge to do freelancing on sites like Fiverr, Upwork, Elance, I think Elance is what the name was. But yeah, I have earned money, I have done projects, big and small, I have done personal projects and I'm also running a business around the same thing now with CodeDAM. On the DSA and the competitor side, I have medium level of experience i have used competitive coding i have tried competitive coding when i was in school i have won competitions i have been to second round third round of google code jam facebook hacker cup and also tried a bunch of competitive coding things when i was in college because of my subject requirements so i have solved problems i have seen how the competitive world works and i have also seen how the real world the real web programming works and other sorts of programmings as well. So let's move ahead and understand what matters and why should you pick one over the other or you know what is exactly suitable for you in this video. Let's just go ahead and discuss that. All right, part two of the video, DSA and competitive coding. I would like to take this minute or two right here to separate both of them. People often are confused a lot and probably fight over wrong questions when somebody's probably emphasizing more on the DSA part and other people think it is competitive coding. When I say DSA, DSA stands for data structures and algorithms. This is an integral part of everyday programming as well. Data structures and algorithms, if you think about it, it is very fundamental. Arrays are data structures, you know, objects, maps are data structures and you would be using them a lot in your daily code as well. In JavaScript, when you're creating an object, you're technically creating a data structure. When you're writing something to an array or pushing something to an array, you are technically working with a data structure. If you are trying to create a small algorithm which periodically notifies you if there's a new tweet from Elon Musk, that is an algorithm. So you need that algorithmic and data structures knowledge even to work with very simple programs. What people get caught up on is when people start confusing the data structure part with the competitive coding part. And they are very different. It's like taking data structures and algorithms to a next level problem, right? It's like talking about addition and subtraction, which is data structures, but doing integration, which is competitive coding. So that this is the level of difference. Why? Because competitive coding questions are framed in such a way that they are mathematical questions. So first of all, you have to figure out the actual math logic of the problem. And then you have to code it in a most optimized and constrained way that you have to use minimum memory, the fastest execution time and the best algorithm possible. So what you have to understand is this, this video is not about data structures versus software development. This is about competitive coding versus software development. Competitive coding is next level hard and requires a lot of effort and a lot of practice to master versus software development, which is relatively easier to begin but also is hard to master and create something productive and solid and scalable. It would take you months of practice, if not years, with software development as well. It's not that easy. All right, so this brings me to the third part of the video, which is what exactly does competitive coding involve? All right, like I said before, in order to solve a truly new competitive coding problem, which you have probably never seen before, you absolutely have to have a lot of clarity on, well, code, first of all, then logic, and then also know a lot of algorithms, which are the best for performing a certain tasks. So for example, if I say you, what's the fastest or the best algorithm to just sort a list or perform any sort of common problems like knapsack problem, for example, 
you would probably as a competitive coder you would probably have these answers on your tips right you would remember these algorithms you would know which is the most common algorithm used to crack this problem because what happens with competitive coding is you take a very big problem start breaking it into smaller subset of problems and you do it as long as you don't reach a fundamental base where you have to create the logic yourself or you don't reach a point where you can use a pre-existing algorithm which you remember you have you still might have to code it right it's not like it's built into library but you might just remember it you might just you know not know how it works maybe you just remember the code you just write it down and it gets the job done so you can do that but in most cases if you're a good competitive coder you truly understand how the problem solving and the problem breakdown logic works and you probably if you're a good competitive coder you are an awesome programmer as well because you can truly think how to break down a problem into different paths and then regroup them and create a solution out of that my experience with competitive coding and learning about this is not good primarily because the way I learn is not through memorizing these algorithms and making sure that I know the right algorithm at the right time because that's what competitive coding requires. Competitive coding literally has competitive the word in it, right? So you have to use as much advantages you can to yourself and one of the advantages is just memorizing these algorithms, right? Which one is used where and just trying to practice this over and over again. If you have practiced in your 11th or 12th standard the standard integration questions in mathematics you would have seen that there are certain problems where you have to just remember once you break down the integration question into a certain format there is a specific format you have to follow there is a specific algorithm you have to follow in order to solve that question if you don't follow that you will be stuck for a very long time and this is exact analogy which you can relate with competitive coding as well. There are a few problems where I think most of the hard problems where you would have to know a lot of information prior to before you even start that question. If you don't know that, you probably will never be able to solve that question in the given constraints or given time. All right, the fourth part is what does software development involve? Now, this is easy. Software development just involves you building products for the real world right whether it's a cli tool whether it's a web application whether it's some sort of data processing whether it's mobile application whether it's data science which is kind of like data processing but you are doing something where either some of the users are able to see what you're doing or you're trying to analyze the data from the users themselves right you're not specifically writing a core algorithm which needs to be very optimized and specialized in you know in most of the cases you're not right some cases yes you do need to write that but in most of the cases you don't have to you have to however work very well with systems right so you have to make sure that your backend can talk to other server your one computer can talk to other computer so as a software developer depending on your field i mean it varies from one field to another but more or less what you have to be good with is with systems it's not exactly with code alone it's kind of like with a lot of things with code with systems with programs you have to understand how these systems talk to each other how computers usually work what is the protocol you are using how to create or set up a server like from scratch how to set up back ends front ends depending on again what on your field but it's more like you are interacting with something which is actually there instead of just solving a problem which you do in competitive coding which is hard which is a mathematical problem where you have to only think about and only write code based on the logic right which you come up with so software development is more like you can say real world programming and competitive coding is competitive coding which involves a lot of algorithmic part this brings me to my next part which is is competitive coding used in real world and the answer for this question is a small yes and a big no right so what do i mean by that this means that for the most part, you will never use those level of questions in competitive coding, which you see in competitive coding in your real world projects, right? Even if you need to use those, those level of sophisticated algorithms, you probably don't have to worry about what is going on in that algorithm. Either you can get a library for that, 
or you can you know just forget about imp after implementing an algorithm which you know works fine because you don't necessarily want to dive into a lot of details but as a programmer your job is to just make sure that the projects are working end to end and ensuring the code quality and stuff but yeah i mean in real world you focus more on making sure that your code is maintainable making sure your code is modular it's clean you you're not repeating yourself you are making sure that the systems are working together systems are redundant stuff like this you focus more on bigger problems i mean it could be bigger or smaller depending on how you see it but instead of just focusing only on the code aspect you focus more on these sorts of problems and the reason i said yes is because if you have a requirement which requires a specific algorithm, then there is no replacement. Then you need a person who is good with data structures, algorithms, and CP competitive coding to do that part. There is no replacement. I mean, you can have 10 developers who know React and one developer who knows competitive coding. And if you want to create an algorithm which calculates the shortest route between two paths, those React developers cannot do anything. I mean, your use effect hooks and your use state and your declarative programming and your clean code would not help you to break down a grid based problem into smaller parts and, you know, running a DFS, BFS, whatever the algorithms are to determine the uh, shortest path. This part is irreplaceable, right? This is also kind of irreplaceable, but you get the idea that this when required is needed, right? So this is also important in terms of that small yes, which I said for competitive coding use in real world. All right, this brings me to my next question, which is why then big companies like Google or Facebook ask competitive codings in their interview rounds. The reason they do that in, in fact, what I feel the reason is, is because they receive a lot of applications at volume, right? They receive maybe thousands or tens of thousands of applications per day. Now, the easiest way to filter out is to say, okay, if a person can crack this really hard problem, they probably know, or, you know, they most definitely know how to think as a problem solver. These companies, they already have the majority of their algorithms and core infrastructure built, right? They need people who can maintain it, upgrade it, and basically are more flexible. So they just need to be problem solvers. They don't necessarily need to set up a tech stack. They don't necessarily need to bring up a product or service online, not at least on the hiring part. They pretty much just need to be problem solvers, right? And the best way to do that is to just give them a question in competitive coding, Let's see how they are able to crack it, whether it's a free graph based question, anything, and then hire them, right? If they are able to do that. Now, it is extremely possible if you are working on, let's say, Chrome Dev Tools front end team, right? If you are applying for that job, it is extremely possible that you might be the person who is extremely relevant for that position. You know how to work with the document object model and JavaScript and the C++ and the node bridge and all that stuff, you probably might have contributed to Google's Chromium project or anything, but you still might get rejected, right? Because what these companies try to focus on is they want, they are okay if a few people who are capable enough do not get in, but they're probably not okay if a few people who are not capable enough get in, right? And the problem with real world programming evaluation, at least for now, is that it is easier, or rather I should say it is harder to evaluate somebody on spot because there is just so much knowledge, so much things you can do. And it's relatively easier to evaluate on a competitive coding problem, right? You just have to send them one, sit with them for five minutes, 10 minutes, see how they are thinking and so on. I mean, now that I think about it, it's technically possible to do this with real world programming as well. If you're doing for, I don't know, like software architecture or, you know, just laying out cloud architecture and just seeing how the other person thinks. But usually with competitive coding, these problems are very well laid out. They are already present. So they just have to reuse them. But yeah, I mean, if they could, they could just put an effort and replace this whole evaluation thing to real world programming as well to a certain extent. And I think a lot of companies are doing that eventually. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the reason that most companies, most big companies right now use competitive coding as an evaluation criteria because they receive a lot of applications and they need to filter out a lot of them very quickly, right? And the startups and small companies who use this criteria where they don't have any specific competitive coding needs, they are just, you know, bad companies, to be honest. You probably should just not even try to get into those companies who are small and they are putting up 
difficult DSA rounds and difficult DSA questions. They are not worth it. So the final and the most important question in this video is, should you learn competitive coding or not? To answer this question, you have to try out competitive coding first. I tried it out. I hated it. I did not use competitive coding again. And I probably would never, I think. You might like it. I know a lot of people who enjoy competitive coding, truly enjoy competitive coding, right? And there are, there is this third group of people who do it just for the placements or, you know, just for getting a job. The third one is also fine, but it's only fine if you aspire to go into big companies or for whatever reason, I would like still ask you to evaluate why do you want to work for Fang or any company when you can pretty much work for smaller startups, which give you equal better pay and you know, you work in a much tighter environment. But yeah, that's that's something for another day. But what you have to realize is if you want to break into these companies, which do require competitive rounds, then of course you would have to learn competitive programming, but don't do it only for getting jobs in some company, because you can always get job in some company just based, just on basis of your software development skills as well. If you're somebody who enjoys competitive coding, don't let anyone tell you that it's bad, this good, whatever, just keep doing what you do. My personal stories, I did not enjoy it. Your personal story might be that you enjoy it a lot and it's fine. There is no one right answer. You do what fits to you. In general, you will see that people who learn competitive coding, especially in college days, get an advantage in terms of getting a job or a placement, but that is fake. That does not matter in the long run. If you are a good software developer, it does not matter because as a good developer, you would be picked up by any good funded company, any good funded startup, small to medium sized company, and it would probably make more, if not same compared to those people who are working in Fang or, you know, any other company. So the point of this answer or this seventh question, the final one is that you should do competitive coding only if you like it. And the same goes for software engineering as well. You should only build software if you like it or, you know, you're okay with it and you want to get a job or, you know, anything like that. So primarily keep your focus on the fact that competitive coding is not the only way to get a job, number one. And number two, it is okay to not like competitive coding. I see a lot of people getting, you know, just pressured by the seniors or anyone that you have to do competitive coding if you want to get a job this that that that's not true especially in today's world especially in today's remote world you can pretty much get a good job as a developer without competitive coding right i hired my first two people with first two developers on code dam asking zero dsa or zero competitive coding level questions Right. One of the questions in CodeDAM's interview was to actually build a playground like interface, which CodeDAM uses. So you can get the idea of how the companies at this scale, especially when they are very small, hire. And I think that's that's what I will probably continue for a long, long time. But yeah, that's my story and you know, my views on competitive coding versus software engineering. Do let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? And if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Forward this video to somebody who's stuck between the dilemma of choosing competitive or choosing software engineering, web development, React Native, anything. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully this was valuable to you. If it was, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon.